The release of Copilot for Microsoft 365 for small and medium businesses means that there's now a whole bunch more Microsoft 365 customers who can buy and deploy this tool. That's really exciting. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who cannot wait to get their hands on it or have already started the process of deploying it. But we have to remember that since last summer, Microsoft has been nudging us to get ready for Copilot. And now that it's here, how many of us have actually done that work? There are some things on their prep list that are just designed to make Copilot work better in your business. So a kind of nice to haves. But there are other things that are designed to mitigate big risks AI might expose in your business, which you really should check off before any significant deployment of licenses. So in this video, I'm gonna do a review of all those things you should try to get done ahead of getting out your credit card to buy those shiny new $360 Copilot for Microsoft 365 licenses. And along the way, hopefully you'll get answers to some burning questions that might have been in the back of your mind around this new technology. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCoursey. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guide for small business leaders on adopting AI. I help businesses around the world get more from technology. And if you're interested in working with me or getting a copy of my book, there's more information and links in the video description. We'll jump into the prep work in just a minute. But first, let's have a quick refresher on Copilot for Microsoft 365 itself. Over the last year, Microsoft has been building a significant lineup of AI tools under its Copilot brand. These are all designed to supplement the work humans would ordinarily do and help them focus their energy on the areas of work where they add most value rather than on mundane or repetitive tasks. Copilot for Microsoft 365, or Microsoft 365 Copilot as it was then named, was announced last March, really as the pinnacle product in this Copilot product line for the needs of your average knowledge worker. Copilot for Microsoft 365 brings the capabilities of generative AI directly into the apps you're using every day. It builds an AI experience into Outlook, Word, Excel, Teams, PowerPoint, Loop, and OneNote, as well as a standalone AI chatbot called Microsoft 365 Chat. It layers the capabilities of generative AI you may have seen in tools like ChatGPT or Bing Chat, now called Copilot, onto the context of the business data you already have inside Microsoft 365, like your documents, email, and chats, to give you an integrated experience where the AI can generate responses directly contextually relevant to what you've been working on. Copilot for Microsoft 365 was announced as being available as a $30 a month add-on to Microsoft 365 customers with applicable base licenses. But when it was initially released on November 1st, it was only available to larger businesses willing to purchase 300 or more licenses. With the recent announcements, Copilot for Microsoft 365 is now available to add on to any Microsoft 365 Business Standard, Business Premium, E3 or E5 license, along with Office 365, E3 and E5, and in quantities as low as a single license, with the only remaining restriction being that you currently have to pay for each license for a year up front at a cost of $360. There also is no free trial available for this product, as there is for many of Microsoft's online purchasable products. So assuming you're ready to buy, or maybe you already bought, or maybe you're just looking to find out some more information, let's dig into Microsoft's prep list, along with three categories of broad preparations you should make sure you understand before you start deploying Copilot for Microsoft 365 inside your organization. This video will include some demo screens. So as always, any information you're seeing on screen has been simulated for the purposes of demonstrating that technology and you're never seeing anyone's private data. To start our prep journey for Copilot for Microsoft 365, we're going to start where you should really start for any new setup of Microsoft 365 products, setup.microsoft.com. On this website, if we scroll down and select Copilot for Microsoft 365, you can see that we are taken through a list of readiness items that you should check through before deploying any licenses. 
For Copilot experiences in the desktop apps, you need to make sure you've deployed those apps and that your users are in the current or monthly enterprise channels. There are also some privacy settings for the apps that can impact Copilot. I think the one they highlight is connected experiences, but if you've made any changes to those privacy settings, you might want to review them prior to your Copilot deployment. Copilot also gives you the option in PowerPoint of creating presentations from scratch, and if set up properly, can do so within your organizational branding. This link takes you through that. Essentially, you have to set up an organizational asset library for PowerPoint for Copilot to be able to do its thing. If you don't do this, Copilot will work in PowerPoint, it just won't follow your branded templates. You might be interested to read about purview information protection and how this relates to Copilot, but we'll be looking at issues related to this later on in the video. Copilot users need an Enter ID, some of the experiences with it require OneDrive for Business, and you need to ensure you've deployed the new Outlook client. Copilot in Teams needs the Teams desktop client, and if you want to use Copilot in Loop, then you need to ensure that's enabled. Once you've worked through all that, you can deploy your licenses. Here, I've logged in with a global admin account to show you what this will look like. If you haven't bought your Copilot licenses before you get to this step, use the Purchase Services option on the left menu to do so. Remember, you'll only be able to buy as many Copilot licenses as you have eligible licenses, which include Microsoft 365 Business Standard, Business Premium, E3 or E5, along with Office 365, E3 or E5. Once you have the necessary licenses, you can assign them here. If you want to do group-based assignment instead, you should do that from the AAD or Enter ID portal. Next, you can use this standard announcement to help people understand what they've been given access to but do bear in mind the language of what you're checking with these boxes here, as you appear to be giving Microsoft consent to send similar emails on an ongoing basis, unless you later opt them out. And then we're kind of done deploying Copilot. But hold up, there are three things to dig into in more detail. First, let's talk about preparing your data. But before we talk about data prep, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a thumbs up to help it get in front of more interested people. And if you want to see more like this, then make sure you're subscribed. The superpower of Copilot for Microsoft 365 versus alternative solutions like ChatGPT or even Copilot or Copilot Pro is its ability to seamlessly interact with your Microsoft 365 data. When working with generative AI, we make requests using a text command called a prompt and an essential component of any prompt is providing the right context. For example, if you want to find out what are good tourist attractions for your toddler when next visiting New York City, the location of New York City and the age range of toddler is vital context for you to get a good response from the AI, as it would be vital context to get a good response from a human city tour guide too. Despite the conclusion that many immediately jump to when they hear about the capabilities of Copilot for Microsoft 365, this is not an AI that's trained on your data. It's in fact really important that you understand from a security and data protection perspective that Microsoft's AI models are never trained on your business data. You make use of exactly the same AI model to deal with your requests as the business down the street. What makes the responses you get relevant and useful to you is the context the AI model gets to understand your request. All the data you store in Microsoft 365 kind of lives in a database called the Microsoft Graph. This is the picture of your use of Microsoft 365 and includes your documents, your emails, your calendar appointments, your contacts, your chats, etc. The graph provides a holistic and easy to access view of everything that connects you together in your organization. For example, a meeting you attend might also be attended by a colleague, or a file you're working on might also be accessible to your manager. Copilot for Microsoft 365 leverages this data along with a new type of index called the semantic index to automatically pull the right contextual information out of your graph data to enrich the request you make to the AI and ensure you get the most contextually appropriate responses. How Copilot works in this regard could well be a whole video. In fact, it is. Go check out my video on this if you're interested in finding out more 
There's a link down in the description for that. But the vital thing for every user of Copilot and particularly every IT decision maker opting to deploy it to understand is what an individual user can see in Microsoft 365 defines the extent of the contextual information Copilot can provide to the AI. For this reason, it's vital that your Microsoft 365 data is organized and managed so that your users have just enough access to what they need to do their job. I mostly work with smaller organizations, and more often than not, I find Microsoft 365 tenants where the access individual users have to data bears very little relationship to the needs of their actual role. And this isn't just about people having access to private data that they shouldn't. It's also about the confusion that can be caused by having multiple copies of similar data or out of date information that is virtually indistinguishable from that which is current based on where or how it's stored. Even if Sally in sales knows exactly which price list document to refer to, even though she has access to 10 different ones, nine of which are incorrect, there's no way Copilot can have that knowledge. It either has access to data or it doesn't. And if it's in its index and it appears relevant based on the prompt, it'll show up. The first place you should try to deal with this issue is permissions. Review who has access to your sites and teams, starting with high priority or restricted items and moving out from there. This is something you should have a process in place for anyway, but deploying Copilot for Microsoft 365 just gives a new reason to focus on this. And the right time to do this is before you deploy Copilot, not after someone inadvertently has content from some super secret finance SharePoint site related to your new CEO's pay offer included in a summary they requested on your business's compensation policies. The second place you can deal with this issue is with the search index itself. There can certainly be situations where you want someone to have access to resources, but you don't want that access to be included in your tenant search experiences or Copilot, avoiding some of the repercussions that could be associated with inadvertent broad oversharing. On a SharePoint site, you can turn off search indexing and then that content will be excluded from Copilot's broad tenant-wide index, but not from the personal index available to people who are actively working with that content. Remember, at all times, what comes back to you via Copilot is simply a reflection of what that user already had access to. Having a Copilot for Microsoft 365 license does not convey any additional access to data or even the ability to see data existing that they wouldn't otherwise have had. The reason this is important to review is not because Copilot gives some special access, but because how Copilot works might shine a spotlight on existing data permissions issues inside your tenant. Now that we've talked about data, I next want to dig into security and compliance. But before that, I know that jumping into AI technology for your business can be exciting, but it can also be extremely daunting. You might have started this video just thinking you needed to buy a handful of licenses, and now you're worried that spreadsheet you created with everyone's home address details on it a few years back might be shared with too many people, and Copilot might highlight that. Getting the right advice for whatever your digital transformation or AI challenge is can be a real game changer. That isn't always about some big project, but just having someone to talk to who can point you in the right direction. That's where my new virtual digital transformation coaching service comes in. You can book some time with me one-on-one -on -one to get advice that's relevant to you. This is easy to book and competitively priced. So if your head is spinning a little, take a look at the links down below. Controlling your data isn't just about setting permissions and locking down what your employees can see, but also about them making good choices about how they use information and what they share. A lot of this comes down to training, which we will cover next. But there is a technology component to this too. The significant benefit of moving from Microsoft 365 Business Standard to Premium or E3 to E5 is there's a huge jump in the protective technologies Microsoft gives you access to in those licenses. I won't dig into the detail of all of these, but while technologies like sensitivity labeling or data loss prevention aren't directly related to Copilot, having tools that help your team members to be better stewards of your data when you're investing in a tool like Copilot to use your data more effectively and speedily makes a lot of sense. 
If you're in a situation where you've allocated your team members Microsoft 365 Business Standard because it's the lowest price offering, you don't have any third-party protective technologies in place, and now you're looking to buy Copilot at $30 a month, it might be worthwhile having a quick review of your data risk profile and just pausing to think about whether you have all your bases covered. Copilot is designed to play nicely with tools like content labeling to seriously restrict how it can be employed to generate content from sensitive materials without restricting the access your team members need. There are also other benefits to these higher level licenses like conditional access, which can make your environment safer overall. This is not a security channel, and I'm not gonna go into the detail of all of this, but when making any big technology change, it's a time that you should be cognizant of these sorts of risks and the resulting opportunities that you can get when you're pushing something new out. Lastly, let's talk about the adoption process. Copilot for Microsoft 365 is not just a new app, it's a new way of working and a new way of thinking about productivity. It also comes to us with all the buzz and all the baggage of being part of the current AI boom. In chapter four of my book, Who's in the Copilot Seat, I write about the process of preparing your team for AI and how this is different than simply preparing them for a new application. It's important that they understand not just how to use Copilot or where to access it, but also why it can be wrong, why human supervision is so important, and why it should be embraced as a tool to revolutionize how work works, rather than feared as the first step in the elimination of their job. In terms of how to use these tools and responsible practices around them, one of the best places to visit can be the Microsoft Adoption website at adoption.microsoft.com. This provides an overview, not just for Copilot, but for any Microsoft tool. But with Copilot, they have a wealth of information from complete adoption plans to prompting guides. Best practice for adoption won't just make it a process that happens between individuals and Copilot, but between individuals too. Set up groups of users, ensure it's on your weekly team meetings, and depending on the size of your business, perhaps trial it with just a handful of users first. You might have clear aims for what you want to co-pilot to achieve in your business, but ensure these are within its technical capabilities. I've had many conversations with clients and others where the specificity of someone's goals don't fully align with what AI or specifically co-pilot can achieve right now. For example, I had one business owner who wanted to feed co-pilot the inbox of a departed colleague and have it essentially do their job. While there are AI technologies out there that claim to be able to do something along these lines, it certainly isn't a feature of Copilot for Microsoft 365, and I would strongly caution against signing up for any technology that claims it can do this with AI right now. So hopefully this video has given you all you need to feel confident in pressing that buy button for your Copilot for Microsoft 365 licenses. Just make sure that you do the prep steps that are important to your business before you deploy them widely within your business. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.